Hey guys, it's Tom here with MYT Solar. We just finished up this install on this 24 KRS. It's a backcountry series with a generator. I want to show you around and while we're at it today, I want to talk about when sometimes less solar is actually better than more solar. I know one of my other videos recently, I talked about you can't have enough solar. This, this situation was a little different and I'll show you when we get on the roof, but let's look at everything. This 24 KRS has the generator in the front compartment, which makes this bed compartment a little smaller, but we were still able to fit three of these Victron 330 amp hour lithium batteries in here. So we've got 990 amp hours of lithium power. We've got a 150, 100 MPPT for the solar, regulating the solar, multi plus 3000, and all the other little good trimmings. One of the things we get a lot of comments on, which people seem to like is obviously the way we lay out the stuff. We always put LEDs in, two purposes really. One, we're really proud of our work. We want to make sure that it's showcased whenever anybody's showing some of their friends. And secondly, it actually just helps to work on it and see all the components and you don't have things hidden behind walls or tucked into dark compartments where you can't see. The whole power system is kind of laid out here in the bed. Having the clear plexiglass to be able to see it, as well as the LEDs to light it all up, we think is just a really nice touch. And again, we think our installs are beautiful, so we like to show them off. I'll show you where we put the touch panel on this rig. Those LEDs that I talked about under the bed, we have them hooked up to a relay on the servo so that those are turned on and off by the screen, which is really nice. But here's the screen, we're able to get it. Every, every build is a little different in terms of where we can get this screen. Unfortunately, the Touch 70 is not a wireless screen. This screen requires USB for power and it requires HDMI to project what the Serbo GX is actually displaying. We need to run cable from our Serbo to our Touch 70. And if you've ever run cable in an RV, you probably realize that a lot of stuff was done maybe when there wasn't a roof or there wasn't a wall or there wasn't a uh, shower, things like that. The cab running cable after the fact is pretty tricky. We always need to find a wall where we can get the Touch 70 mounted to, which makes sense. Um, we're really happy with this because obviously the other controls, the controls for the air conditioning are right here. This was one of those situations where it really worked out quite nice for the customer. But again, this Touch 70, talk about it in pretty much every video, but with the Victron system, you're gonna get the ability to have the Servo GX when all of the devices are Victron devices, you're able to the ability to get the Servo GX, which displays to this screen which is gonna tell you what's going on right now. So right away, this is just an example of where we are today, but looking at this screen, right away, I know my batteries are at 93%. Pretty awesome not just to say, oh, it's one LED or it's two LEDs or it's two thirds or whatever. It's literally 93%. So we have a really good accurate representation of our battery. If we look here in the battery box, I can also tell exactly how many watts are being drawn from the batteries or how many amps are being pulled out of the batteries down in these little sections here, voltage as well. So I get a lot of information about the battery. If I go into the menu and I go time to go, I even get a time that is exactly the amount of time until those batteries reach 0%. And that's assuming no, whatever conditions we have right now. Right now we don't have a lot of solar, so that number will obviously change, but you get all that information about where you're at in space and time as your RV, which is really important. I know what I'm running on the 12 volt side in this coach. I turn my lights off, I can see my 12 volts, power drop down, turn it on, I can go, oh, that LED that I turned on right then, that was only about five watts. That's pretty nice to know. I can tell what whether I'm inverting or whether I'm plugged in. I can see here what I'm running on the 120 volt side, and I just look at this straight away and I go, oh, that's 300 watts. Eventually you, under, you learn what each device draws. 300 watts, I go, oh, the fridge must be on. And the, oh, the fridge is on because I know the fridge is a 300 watt device. Or I see 1500 in that column. I know, oh, the electric water heater's on. Just little things like that that really let you know your system. I think this screen is just such a gem. And just, I, I think I say it every time, but the screen alone will change the way you RV. But the screen obviously requires the components. You can't just have the screen without having all those Victron components, but it's just a really nice option there. These guys are full timing in this rig. They've got three little cute doggos and they're from New Mexico. And so they reached out to us. They wanted to make sure they had a really good power system when they sold the house and went full time. They want to have as much power as possible. So they went with our rail system, which you can probably tell, which always is a great option. Gets the panels a little flatter on these curved roofs. We're able to move the panels in places that we want them. We're able to cover some skylights. 
In this case, the customer lost the bathroom skylight, which they were happy to do because it keeps down heat and they didn't really ever take a shower and look up at the sky. What I said at the start of the video was that sometimes less solar is more. Obviously these guys wanted as much solar on the roof as possible. We always try to make things reasonable, as much as possible, but walking space, things like that. We got up here and we started mapping out this roof and we found that there was clearly room for 2000 watts. And so two th these are 250 watt panels. So there would have been room for a thousand watts down one side on one string and a thousand watts down the other side on another string, especially with our rail system. What we quickly realized was that two things would suffer if we put an extra panel here and here. Well, one of them was they'd lose a skylight, another skylight. One of them was that they'd lose another, would they'd lose the wine guard. Neither of those really matter to most of our customers. Not many people are watching free to air. And like I said, most people are trying to keep heat out of their skylights. But the main reason that we didn't suggest the customer spend another maybe $800, $900 on an extra 500 watts was that the position of the air conditioner meant that these two panels that were gonna be right here were constantly gonna be getting shaded from the air conditioner. And that shade would have brought down a, a line of those panels. We may have not even seen better performance out of 2000 watts with shade from the air conditioner constantly versus this nice 1500 watts where your panel there is never gonna get hit by air conditioner shade. Your two panels there are never gonna hit by air conditioner shade and the same on the other side. In this case, we said, let's stick to 1500 watts. If you wanna spend another thousand dollars and boost the solar in this situation, you'd be better off having us build an external port and taking 500 watts and putting it out in the sun somewhere, which we obviously can do, do that. This just made a lot more sense, but this is kind of a situation where less is more. You really have to think about what the sun is going to do in most of the conditions and adding an extra panel might seem, oh, I'm boosting my wattage, I've got more solar on my roof, but how often is that solar going to be getting direct sun if it's next to an obstacle on the roof that might cause shade? You can see right here, it's pretty early in the morning, it's eight o'clock, so the sun's reasonably low. But you can see right here, this shade from this air conditioner would have been over the majority of the panel that was sitting here. It's actually not catching this panel at all, which is awesome, because it's kind of like, if it ever was gonna catch this panel, it would be right now. So this probably won't ever get any shade. And, but this panel would be shaded for quite a long period of the day. And that's gonna bring down this entire series array because we have two series arrays here. And so a little shade on this would affect the output a little bit of this whole, whole line of panels. And then as the sun switches over the other side, well then that same thing would have been happening to that other panel. An extra 500 watts, but throughout the entire day, some of that 500 watts would have been shaded anyway. Just not a very good uh, economical way, I suppose, for this customer to get maximum power. Now they have 1500 watts, but it's all clear and it's gonna do great for them. Let me know what you guys think about less is more. I'm wondering if you've maybe put panels on your roof or and decided to leave some out, even though technically it would have added to your wattage, maybe it wasn't in the best position. Let me know what you think about leaving these two off for this rig. And yeah, if you need any solar needs, we're currently booking for next year, but if you have any solar needs and would like to get on our schedule, please uh, go to our website, fill out a solar inquiry form. We'd love to help you out and help you get off grid and enjoy your adventures. Cheers, thanks for watching.